Camera U Explore 2.0, it is with great pleasure that I extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you for the UI UX Odyssey that you all be waiting for. In this session, we aim to dwell into the foundational aspects of a more UI UX design. It is a great you pleasure, essential that principles, a warm and welcome. But Each that's not all. And everyone we also provide you for the UI UX UX Odyssey popular design that tools all be and analyze exemplary session in the phases to, to dwell understand the essential aspects of a more UI UX designers. This workshop offers hands on principles opportunity and to craft simple UI designs, followed by a brief activity to reinforce your learning. Get ready for an evening. Bring with creativity and productivity where curiosity ignites innovation and boundaries cease to exist. To navigate you through this exciting journey of design and creativity, we are privileged to have Zone 24-7 as the official workshop partner for Mora UX Explorer 2.0. Join us in welcoming the team of masterminds from Zone 24-7 who will guide you through the mastering UI UX from the ground up. So welcome aboard, Mr. Samrudiga Vadigagamua, Senior Lead UI Designer, Mr. Ma Mrs. Madhushani Sanayaka, Senior UI UX Engineer, Mr. Mahe Silva, Senior UI Engineer, Mr. Samira Vijayaratna, Trainee Associate UI Engineer, and Mr. Timothy Samuel, Trainee Associate UI UX Engineer. With that being said, why wait to experience exploration firsthand? Fellow undergraduates, buckle up for the evening packed with realization of endless possibilities within the domain of UI UX to scout the next generation of UI UX masters. It is my absolute privilege to invite the team of UI UX visionaries from Zone 24-7, Mr. Samdhidavad Nagamur, Ms. Madhushani Disanayaka, Mr. Mahesh Silva, Mr. Samir Vijayaratna, and Mr. Timothy Samuel, who are about to take the spotlight to kick the UI UX Odyssey. Hello all. So uh, welcome everyone to uh, UX Flow uh, 2.0. Uh, and first of all, I would like to thank uh, IEEE student branch of the University of Moratua uh, for inviting us back for the second time. And we have conducted a successful workshop last year. Uh, and we are happy to uh, be here again. And uh, let me introduce uh, myself and my team. Can you move to the next slide? Yeah. 
Okay, so I am Samadhi Tabadi Mangrav, uh, Senior Lead UI Engineer at Son 24-7. And here we have a talented uh, team of uh, UI UX experts, uh, Dilani, uh, Pamudi, Madhushani, Mahesh, uh, Timothy, and Samira. Uh, uh, all of us are available to answer any questions you may have about the session and the UI UX. And next, I'll uh, brief about our uh, company. Uh, our company uh, founded in uh, 2004 and our headquarters in Silicon Valley, uh, San Jose and uh, with our advanced uh, technology center in uh, Naval, Sri Lanka. And uh, we specialize uh, in end-to-end -end technology consulting and services uh, and we cater to Fortune 500 organizations uh, including tier one uh, retailers in the US USA and our uh, project span enterprise level application banking uh, softwares, general softwares, uh, applications, and warehouse management systems, and RFI uh, with uh, RFID uh, capabilities. And uh, we cover various domains such as uh, big data and data science, uh, engineering and embedded engineering, and also remote monitoring and IoT and uh, machine learning and uh, cognitive vision, robotics, and uh, innovation services. So we have a vast range of uh, uh, technologies. And additionally, we have our, our own products uh, like uh, based, uh, based on the RFID uh, solutions and AI based machine missions. And also we have a digital payment related uh, products and also we have a cognitive vision analytic products. Uh, and uh, uh, then I, uh, in our technology center, we have over uh, 200 employees uh, in several departments. Uh, including hardware, software, and business analysis, project management, QA, uh, and UI UX, and more. And uh, we believe uh, work-life balance. Uh, so while working uh, on a software uh, solution, we can take a break and play with uh, table tennis with our colleagues. And also we have carom, chess, checkers, and a lot of uh, indoor activities as well. And also uh, we have separated team to organize uh, uh, events. Uh, so uh, this year we had uh, uh, quiz nights, uh, movie movie nights, uh, and also we have a team outings. Uh, so not only that, uh, we have uh, say separate uh, table tennis, uh, futsal, cricket, badminton teams, and we have also active uh, uh, Toastmasters uh, Cup as well. So that's all about our company, and. Um, uh, I'll brief about our uh, UI UX team as well. So uh, we closely collaborate with the uh, uh, client and also uh, uh, we work with our BAs and developers as well. So uh, you'll get a glimpse uh, into our work during the session. Uh, and also I would like to invite you as well. So if you're interested to join our team, feel free to forward your CV. And we uh, we always on the look, uh, lookout for uh, top talents. So that's all about our company and our team. So let's uh, move to today's agenda. Uh, okay, so this is the content we, we are going to deliver today. Uh, first of all, Madhushani uh, will provide an overview, uh, overview of the UI UX uh, with the real world examples. And then uh, Samir uh, will uh, deliver uh, about the typography, colors, layouts, and how to use the uh, layouts and composition. How, uh, how to uh, balance the UI and everything. And also uh, Timothy will uh, walk you through with the popular design tools uh, such as Figma, Sketch, uh, XD. And uh, he will uh, explain about, uh, uh, he will come comparative analysis the uh, help, uh, help, uh, help you to choose the right uh, one to master. And also uh, lastly, we have uh, Mahesh, uh, he will provide uh, a hands-on experience with the Figma uh the most advanced tool in the uh, and popular tool in the uh, market and so that's all about the content today so let's start the session uh with the introduction to ux so madhushani over to you thank you samadita uh good evening everyone so hope i am particular enough and you can see my screen Can somebody please confirm? Audible enough? Yes, uh, Madam, you are audible. Thank audible. you. Thank you for confirming. So I am Madhushani and I'll walk you all through a brief introduction to UX. 
and I am going to uh, switch off the camera now so you can. Uh, may have already heard of this term UX, and uh, but let me give you a formal definition to start with to define what is user experience. We have this uh, popular definition by Donald Norman, who is a prominent UX researcher and a cognitive scientist. So the definition says user experience encompasses all aspects of the end user's interaction with the company, its services, and its products. It seems complex. Let me simplify it a little bit more. So UX uh, user experience is how a user interacts with or experiences this particular product or service in question, right? So actually the user experience is all the aspects of the interaction that happens between the user and the product or service in question. From first contact to the last. For example, if we take a public computer mouse as, a, as an example, the way how it looks, how it feels in the hand, how easily it can be moved, and how useful it is uh, to achieve what we are going to uh, do using the mouse. All of these are included in the user experience. So, uh, so we will see what UI is. So we have heard both of these terms, UX and UI. Now that we have an understanding of what user experience is, let's see how UI comes to this picture. UI, user interface, is the space where interactions between the user and product that we talked about actually happen, right? User interface is uh, just a part of the user experience. It's the interface which the user will interact with. So, uh, for an example, if you take a mobile application, the UI, the UI on your phone is where the ac actions happen, like tapping the buttons, swiping over to see different items, opening up and uh, closing pop-ups likewise. So what we commonly do in this industry is designing and developing the user experiences that occur between our end user and the products or services. So in this case, the UI and UX are always intertwined, the terms, but they are not the same thing. So just have a look at the uh, image on your screen. You can see that the UI is the part uh, on the surface of the sea, whereas the UX is the part where uh, is the part beneath the sea, the rest of the iceberg, because UI is just the visible small tip of that huge iceberg, which is UX, user experience. It's a very small part of user experience. UI is what we usually see, the colors, typography, icons, graphics, illustrations, animations, layout, and other many visual elements. But UX consists of many micro disciplines and components such as uh, content strategy, interaction design, motion design, copywriting, user research, information architecture, including UI design. So, uh, why does UX matter? It, it's a question because we are talking much about UI and UX and it's a question that comes to mind. Why does UX matter? Because Creating good user experience brings value to the table, to all of us, to all the stakeholders engaged in this product development journey. So I'm going to explain the said value in five important factors. First one is user satisfaction. A positive user experience, which is uh, easy to use, visually appealing, and which exactly means users' needs, is crucial to ensure user satisfaction. It leads to repeated business, uh, positive word of mouth, and improved brand reputation. My second factor is increased user engagement and loyalty. A well-designed UX, a carefully, thoughtfully designed UX 
by making products more user friendly, accessible, and inclusive can lead to increased user engagement with the product or service. Users are more likely to engage and retain, retain stay on your product, resulting in increased usage, longer session durations, and uh, maybe higher conversion uh, rates. So third point I'm taking out is better and efficient usability. This means that users can complete the tasks involved in your product or service more easily and quickly. Hence, reducing their frustration and improving their productivity. Fourth fact is reduced costs. You know that developing a software or digital or any other physical product costs huge amount of money. So by designing products and services with the user in mind, meaning user-centric design, it reduces costs associated with rework, user errors, and support and training. A well-designed user experience can reduce the need for customer support and help users explore your product or service without requiring extensive training effort. And the last factor I am bringing out is competitive advantage. This actually doesn't need any explanation. UX has become a key differentiator for companies. It helps your product stand out from the competition leading to increased market value and your revenue growth. Right. So I am bringing out a couple of uh, case studies, UX case studies, which will show how important implementing good user experience is. The first case study I'm talking about is related to the famous e-commerce site, Amazon. So uh, what happened was that so when you uh, usually users filled the shopping cart and then proceeded to check out in in uh, back then uh, the users were offered or prompted to sign up or sign in on the site like uh, when you are in the checkout page they were offered to sign up or sign in but it turned out people could not actually recall they were registered on the site before or which email and password uh, they use, happen to us, right? So many users didn't proceed to check out. They simply left out the process. What happened was they couldn't recall what were they, whether they were registered or what email or password they were using. So they uh, ditched the process at that point of time. So once the user research was done and this issue was found, the designers allowed people to continue the checkout without a registered account. Guess what happened? The number of purchasing customers grew by uh, 45%. The company generated an extra $15 million of revenue in the first month after this design change. And over the year, the site brought an additional $300 million of revenue uh, after this design change. So continue as guest button we now see in e-commerce sites became a 300 million dollars worth right so their user flow had this simple ux issue earlier which is making user to remember things remember whether they had registered remember uh, the which email they were using but it, it ended up in costing them a lot now in present letting users check out as guests is a general best practice utilized at most e-commerce sites. So I'm proceeding to my next case study. So you can guess this uh, retail department. This is related to Walmart, the retail giant in US. So in this issue in 2009, Walmart had a one question survey offered to their customers including this question, right? Walmart to be less cluttered. The question had only two answers, yes or no. Naturally, everyone answered, yes, less clutter is always better than more clutter, right? In response, Walmart removed 15% um, of its inventory. 
as I remember. The result, uh, 1.85 billion loss in sales that led Walmart management to fire the team behind this decision. What happened? If only they changed that closed question. Closed question meaning the question has only two answers, yes or no. If they only change that closed question to an open one, like what do you think should be changed in Walmart, which will require open comments or answers, things would be so different. Instead, they just ignored customer needs, even though their initial intentions were quite the opposite. So today, open questions are a golden standard of user interviews in every design team. Moving on to my next small case study. Uh, I know this is a little bit cluttered, but I had to show this. So this is related to Icon Site, a common uh, site known for providing icons. And in 2014, they added the feature name request icon, where you can request an icon uh, which is currently uh, not available. So it looked like this. The the left part of the screen. So according to the feature logic, the icon request must be upported uh, by a certain amount of times to, uh, I, uh, to for icon site to consider making new icons. So after three years of growth of this company, they redesigned this section and specifically the word button to what we see on the rightmost uh, side of the screen, like this. Yeah. So that it became visible only on the mouse. Is that you, Bob? Robert? If you can see this, you can see that uh, if you hover over this number of words, then only the uh, icons for upvoting and downvoting will be visible, right? Guess what happened here? The average number of words for every icon dropped from 30 to 50, half of the initial amount. So what you can't see, you can't use. Users didn't use, but they couldn't see. They could only see the icons to upward and downward only when they hover over the number of words. So yeah, I guess this UX case study showed you how important applying good UX to your product or service. So how do we design good or better UX? How are we going to define a good UX? Um, I'm going to explain a few characteristics of a good user experience using this concept, uh, Aaron Walter's hierarchy of needs. This concept is actually derived from this famous uh, human motivation theory by Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So a good user experience should have this four fundamental characteristics. Let's say if we are offering a digital product in this case, right? So product should be first and foremost functional. It should satisfy the user goals, business requirements. It should be useful. It should exactly meet the user's needs, right? Only after achieving this level, we can go to the next level, which is reliable. A product should be reliable. The solution we are providing should be available at any moment, accurate, and should work as coded, right? Only after achieving or fulfilling these two bottom levels, we can go to usable level. A product should be usable, meaning it should be easy to use, efficient, and effective to the user. It should not require much effort to learn, discover, explore your product and utilize all its features. Only when a product is functional, reliable, usable, then can users appreciate the delightful, pleasurable or enjoyable aspects of the experience. Basically what Walter's theory tells us in short is that a product can be delightful To complete the bottom levels, it should be functional and reliable, right? So uh, once the foundation of functionality, reliability, usability are achieved, these three levels, delight or the pleasure can be pursued. 
so uh, for a digital product to be of good user experience, how we can check whether it has good user experience? You can start with testing the code to check whether it's functional and reliable, bottom two levels. And you can test the design to check whether it's usable and pleasurable, the top two levels. There's more information on this theory. You can search and learn, but since this is taking too long, uh, I will just say, so these are four important characteristics to remember when we are going to design and implement a solution with good user experience. Next, uh, let's check out fundamental UI design principles to follow when proceeding with the solution. Samira, over to you. Thank you, Madhushani. Good evening, everyone, and I hope you can hear me. I'm Samira Sandakalam from the UX team of Storm 24-7, and uh, I'll, he I'll help you to uh, build your UI and UX for the UX Explorer 2.0 with uh, what I learned, learned for this. Uh, and let's start with typography. A, a, a media and type uh, text and are the most important components of a, a design and the UI. It's the first thing the user interacts with, and so we have to be careful in choosing them. Uh, there are two uh, things we have to first consider: text and the typeface. Uh, when selecting font, uh, we have to be careful uh, if it's visible and uh, readable to the user and typeface uh, plays a major role in it. Uh, text and styling of a product will uh, affect the user positively or negatively. Uh, that may lead to more users or less users of the product. So first thing to select is the typeface of your design. And uh, this is mainly depend on your uh, theme of the theme of the uh, design and the uh, use case of the product. Uh, but it's always good to use a, a command uh, typeface with uh, some uh, visible and uh, use uh, web safe alternatives. I mean web safe, uh, sometimes when we uh, display this in a website, the font may not may be available, so we have to be using the alternative fonts that's offered by the operating system. So we have to be uh, using uh, exact uh, bold and those fonts like, uh, as you know, Arial, Calipri, and uh, those fonts for the design. Uh, here are some of the common fonts uh, used by modern design. Helvetica and uh, Roboto are uh, vastly common between uh, web design and uh, Apple app, uh, Apple and uh, iOS apps. And let's continue. Next most important thing is choosing the font properties for our design. This is the this is a thing we have to decide before starting our design because uh, this depends uh, heavily on the or typeface we chose before. The weight, we all know, uh, makes the text pop and uh, gather more attention from the user. And line height and character spacing are mostly overseen, uh, overlooked by the uh, designer because they think that's not important, but it's actually uh, one of the most important things because it helps, to, uh, it helps the user to read the text uh, with the visible distance. We all uh, consider color palette or theme when creating a UI, but do we use it effectively?
the color not only carries the theme of the website but also gives the uh, user an initial impression of the website uh, about what it delivers and what service may it provide like uh, it may provide creativity simplicity or security related things or it may about trust or financial thing they, they all be they all can be uh, represented with the color we use uh, these are some of the uh, commonly uh, used colors and they are uh, represented emotions and uh, things uh, you may not uh, understand uh, much with this slide but let's talk, take some examples for this example these are mcdonalds and kfc websites so when we uh, drive in the town or uh, on the road we uh, easily recognizes the mcdonalds and kfc logos because they have the signature red color look and same as that these websites carry the same color and the uh, design elements to the website so it easily catches our attention uh, this is another example of the uh, casio g shop website featuring their products and uh, watches uh, we know casio websites are mostly uh, simple but their products are complicated and the design is way complicated than the, uh, the website that also helps to uh, stand out their products by uh, contrasting their design languages also they use some uh, contrasting fonts for uh, fonts and font styles for uh, standing out their uh, offers and prices in their uh, product range. With the UX theories we learned, let's see some good and bad UI samples to understand their use cases. Take a look at this example login page. What will you fill? Uh, fix the button. When what button you fix when after you filling the fields? Is it login me, sign up, or forget password? There is no uh, priority between these any of these buttons. And when we compare to the right side UI, we can see clearly after the email and passwords in field we. We focus our attention to the login me button, which is the most used button, unless it's the user's first time visiting the website. In that case, we use the sign up button. The forgot password button is the one of the most uh, one of the rarely used button because it's only used when we forgot the password. So it can have the least attention in this screen. At first, you may not even see there are icons in this UI, and uh, the text might be not even uh, visible to the reader as well. That's because the lack of contrast between uh, elements and their backgrounds, so that makes them invisible to visible distance. But in comparison to the right side, uh, it it has a great con contrast that making the icons and uh, text pop up the uh, UI better. And also, we can see that here the profile is selected and it has better contrast than the other icons, making a user uh, know that it sees the active app. When we look at this left, left side uh, UI component, there are something off with it. The top text is aligned center, but the bottom text is aligned left. This is uh, not a good UI practice. And uh, when compared to the right side, it is way messier and we can't actually, uh, the reading flow is not uh, straightforward. Like we have to read from here, then here, then we have to go to the start. That's not a good UI practice. and. Uh, this also comes with word wrapping. 
so if we manage to uh, if we have left our text here we can uh, adjust our font size or wrap into make it in uh, displayed in the same line You may have came across some login or some application UI that gives you an error and leads you to nothing. So uh, as like this error text, we don't know what happened. If it's uh, error from our side or the server went down or anything. And uh, in compared to right side, there's a uh, error text informing what is wrong with our input, which is the password. And also it provides us a reset it uh, buttons which is helping the user to uh, continue their user experience which may uh, help the user to stay on the platform because we all know we don't like uh, buggy software and uis uh, sometimes we avoid them consistency is another important thing uh, if we if we might get an older platform to a new platform, we face this issue uh, most oftenly, like uh, mixing old icons with new icons and uh, mixing old components with new components. And uh, to avoid this, we have to always make sure that uh, all the uh, components we are using are on the same style and uh, consistency, like uh, icons from icons are either outline field or from the same source and uh, the corner radius are matching for uh, each element and such. I'm sure everyone has came across that annoying at close button, which is so small that hard to hit that we hit the at and open the uh, add itself not without closing the uh, same thing here with these buttons, uh, which are so hard to uh, interact with the finger, uh, which may lead to accidental touches of these buttons, which, which uh, can lead to uh, unintended actions of the website. Uh, this is a bad practice since uh, modern users are mostly uh, interacting with touch-based touch input. Uh, so we have to be always careful about uh, the element size and the white space between them. A low quality image or media may take user the uh, user's uh, standards, uh, user's intention about the program, be uh, positive or negative. Like uh, if the app provides bad uh, resolutions images we think that's a low quality app and uh, such and also we have to be careful about using uh, the right quality content for the app, uh, app pro, uh, product we're using because uh, if we use uh, 4000 by 4000 image for 100 by, by 100 uh, preview that may take uh, a long time to load this leads to slow and uh, laggy programs uh, it's also not an uh, good experience for the user. Getting better user's attention is easy, like uh, simply like using a highlighted button, bold text or something. But uh, the hard thing is keeping the user's attention on the uh, website or the application. To do that, we have to have a flow of uh, components that uh, user will go through the website and will stay on the website. So these are some common patterns uh, we can follow. As we can see, this is a very cluttered and uh, unorganized website. Uh, as as its name 
and uh, the right side website is a more modern modern website we all see uh, modern websites use this design and uh, lots of white space around the components this is because uh, to uh, gather users uh, attention we have to leave space to each element so uh, the user can focus on something like here we start with the text or the media then we go to the caption then we can uh, interact with the button which is uh, called as call to action button but here if we land into the this website we see this banner and this banner and this content here and maybe some of these buttons but we all miss these of uh, content because it's not organized well from what we learn let's take a look at a common website which is apple.com which i believe have the best one of the best ui designs of all time when we visit the apple.com website we always see our two product names and their uh, latest arrivals of the uh, product line but what we can notice is on one section starts from here and ends here but the uh, next section is cut half this is a uh, technique they use so the user tends to scroll down to see the next item that leads to that, that leads to the user continue to scroll throughout the website and uh, identify uh, and uh, see their pro other products also notice their color usage black and white the signature apple color uh, simplicity and strong uh, brand identity and if we take a look at the website's uh, mobile ui we can see it follows the same uh, same uh, techniques but or, uh, in a different layout because we have to be careful to uh, improve our website or app to any device that uh, the user may use like uh, in modern days we have to be careful uh, if the uh, if if you works on uh, foldable devices and such with that uh, i will uh, hand over the presentation to timothy to continue with Uh, thanks, Amira. Uh, share my screen from my side. Uh, can you all see my screen? We can see the Google Chrome tab and stuff. Yes, now we can see the presentation. Okay, uh, yeah, so, okay. Uh, I've turned my video on for a while and... So, yeah, so hi everyone. So my name is Timothy and I'm at the office at the moment. So if you hear any background noises, don't mind. Uh, yeah. So I'm here to talk about something crucial in the world of UI UX design, the tools of the trade. So just like a chef needs the knife for slicing, dicing, and chopping, a designer needs the right tools for wireframing, prototyping, and creating assets to make the design process much smoother and efficient. So choosing the right tool not only makes your work easier, but also like elevates your quality of design. So let's explore some of the most popular tools across different categories and see why they are loved so much by the designers worldwide. So uh, move on to the next slide. I'll turn my video off. Okay. Yeah, first off, uh, we have wireframe. So wireframes are the backbone of our design. So we'll get into details about wireframing, but uh, to set up the structure uh, before we implement a particular design solution, a design system, uh, we need to have a proper a proper set of wireframes. So uh, 
So we have quite a few uh, wireframes uh, in the industry that we uh, that we use, but uh, out of those, we primarily use Balsamic and uh, uh, Mockflow. So Balsamic is a super incredible, like incredibly user friendly and focuses on low fidelity wireframes, which allows you to like lay out your ideas quickly. Like almost like it's like almost like sketching on a napkin. So it's perfect for brainstorming sessions with your team or clients, uh, making it like it easy to iterate ideas and uh, without just uh, bogging down details. Uh, likewise, so you can easily like draw a sketch using uh, Balsamic or even uh, uh, Mockflow. So once your wireframes are ready, it's time for you to bring it to life with uh, designing tools uh, like Figma, XD, and Sketch. Uh, something to note that uh, you can use Figma, XD, and Sketch for wireframing as well, but uh, they are mainly used uh, as a, to design and for pro prototyping purposes. So Figma is quite uh, well known in the industry and among young designers like you, you and myself as well. So Figma is a cloud-based solution that handles uh, everything from designing to prototyping to collaborating. So whether you are working on a small team or a solo, or uh, it doesn't matter, Figma makes it uh, really simple uh, to create, test, and hand of designs no matter where they are in the world. So uh, next we have Adobe XD. Adobe XD is the tool uh, that brings the power of Adobe's creative suite uh, to UI UX design. So we are well familiar with Adobe XD. So it's uh, incredibly versatile uh, and which allows you for designing, prototyping, and collaborating all in one place. Uh, so even though we have a high fidelity prototype, there are some of you like myself who love to dive deep into creating custom icons like illustrations or any sort of graphic elements. So for that, we primarily was AI boom. Uh, we'll touch a little bit on the future as well. So every day there are some new AI tool getting released. Like, however. Uh, UISAD and Galileo AI are one of the most well-known AI design tools out there at the moment. There are plenty of AI tools that you can use, uh, uh, but uh, these are one of the prominent ones that I've noticed, uh, me personally. So you must be wondering, like, why aren't we uh, using all these wireframing, designing, and prototyping tools when we have AI tools, right? Well, it doesn't work like that way. Uh, just like how you can figure out a generated image from a real image, they are, the same goes for UI. So AI does not uh, design a particular UI by identity, understanding the user's need. The AI doesn't get into the user's shoes and like uh, see the world that way. So therefore, if you are generating a UI from AI-based tool, uh, uh, keep those things in mind and uh, use those tools. You can just use them to, you know, have a sort of a quick sketch or like to get some inspiration from it. But apart from that, I really encourage you not to, uh, you know, use AI tools uh, uh, for like implementing a particular solution. Yeah, uh, now uh, all these tools might be a bit uh, overwhelming for you guys. So if you are wondering, uh, you will have to know all these tools to get into uh, UX, you are probably wrong. Uh, uh, because uh, all these uh, tools are quite similar. So if you know a particular tool or two, it, you can easily transition between those uh, set of tools, uh, especially when it comes to wireframing and uh, prototyping tools. Uh, yeah. So however, uh, from those tools, uh, Figma is uh, the most widely used uh, tool in the industry. So we do have XD as well. Uh, we've been using XD even at our workplace, but uh, since XD is now uh, uh, not uh, be, it's XD is being discontinued by Adobe. Uh, Adobe tried to get into the UI design, UI game. They've been there for quite some time, but uh, Figma uh, is quite uh, uh, loved by the UI UX community. So. We'll we'll take a look at why uh, Figma like why why the designers or why the UI engineers tend to uh, use Figma. Uh, so 
there are a couple of reasons to this. So Figma is a cloud-based platform which allows multiple people to work on the same project in real time. So it makes uh, team collaboration really effortless and efficient. So from wireframing to prototyping to final designs, Figma does it all, everything in just one whole package. So being that it's browser-based, it's incredibly accessible. You don't have to install anything or whatsoever. You can just open your browser, go to your Figma account and uh, start creating your designs. And additionally, uh, Figma has a vast library of templates, uh, components and plugins. So as you all know, re reusability is the key in design. If you can reuse something, uh, that will uh, take down a lot of your effort. Uh, uh yeah so since uh figma comes with a very comprehensive component and uh, styling system users can like uh, leverage it uh to make your reusable components and elements uh to have consistency among your projects and among all your designs and uh, one of the uh, uh one of the most loud features it's not a feature actually it uh, it's the generous free free plan of figma so figma is you don't have to pay it like uh, adobe xd or other other design tools it's pretty much free there there is a paid version but uh, you all can get up and running with no issues uh, with the free plan so this alone makes figma a far better contender than anyone else any other else yeah, so uh, now that we have a bit of an understanding uh, of the tools, let's talk about something that's of a game change in the design and development world, which is uh, design systems. So now you might be wondering what exactly is a design system. So imagine it's, uh, it's as a DNA of your product design. It's not just a bunch of guidelines or a uh, bunch of standards it uh it's it's not just that it's uh it's much more than just a set of rules about typography or color colors uh, a design system it uh, basically ensures that your product uh, remains consistent efficient and true to your brand's identity just like samira uh, mentioned earlier if you take a look at the mcdonald's page uh, you can see how they have utilized colors so all these uh all these applications, they are made uh, by following a design system. We'll take a look at uh, one of the couple of uh, design systems that, that are out there uh, in a little bit. Uh, but uh, first of all, before we before we get there, uh, we first need to uh, understand what are the underlying components of a design, uh, design system. So, Uh, can you all see my screen? My screen went black. Yes, we can see, sir. Uh, so, uh, the first uh, one of the main uh, components of a design system is the style it, right? So, every pretty much all the design system they come with a, a somewhat of a style guide. So think of a style guide as the what of your design system. So it covers the basics, your brand colors, your typography, icon, imagery, and basically the visual expression of your brand. And the next key component, uh, if not the most important component, is the UI component library. So this is uh, the how of your design system. It's a collection of all the building blocks you need to create in your application or your websites like buttons, input fields, models, and uh, there's so much more to it. Uh, so all of these are designed in a way that you can uh, use them seamlessly. So once you use those uh, seamlessly to make a bigger uh, design, it's uh, pretty much, we pretty much call it as a pattern library. So for an example, uh, navigation menus, uh, forms, or card layouts. Uh, those are like uh, those are built by using those uh, uh, components uh, from the UI components uh, library. So it's all about how you are be, uh, how you are building your designs as a uh, like uh, in sort sort of a building blocks way. Uh, like we used to play in our younger days, you can uh, utilize those components and make uh, designs uh, pretty much easily. 
Yeah, uh, so now that we have a bit of an understanding about the, uh, uh, yeah, uh, now that uh, we have a bit of an understanding about the uh, design systems, we'll take a look at one of the uh, most uh, prominent design systems or one of the most loved uh, design systems in the industry, which is the material design kit by Google. So this is like the Swiss, Swiss army knife for designers and developers. So basically a material design kit has pretty much everything from uh, animation, styles, layout, components, to patterns, to everything. So it's a comprehensive uh, design system which allows for flexibility and creatively, creativity while maintaining a consistency across applications and websites. So I'll, uh, I'll show you a bit of uh, what it's like, uh, what a design system is like. Uh, Uh, can you see my screen again? Yes, sir. We can see. Okay. One second. So uh, this is uh, basically what a design system looks like. So this might be a bit of bit overwhelming for you, uh, but we'll slowly get into the details as we go along. And at the end of the session, we anyways have a hands-on uh, with uh, our, one of our team members, Mahesh, will doing will be doing a hands-on uh, session. Uh, so just for you to know the underlying, uh, show the underlying components. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we do have. Uh, some sort of a uh, uh, you know style guide, and then we have components as well. So in the material design kit, uh, there are quite a lot of components that you can reuse, uh, from check boxes to uh, date pickers to whatever may be. Uh, there are uh, pretty much quite a large number of uh, components that you can use. So you can use those uh, ready-made components, and you can give it a bit of your touch and then utilize those components uh, in a way that you can uh, bring your uh, creative designs to life. So going back to the, uh, uh, going back to the slides. Uh, can you see the screen? Yes, sir. We can see the Google uh, phone. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Samira, uh, will it be possible for you to share the screen? Uh, my screen is flickering when I connect to my extra mount. Yeah, thanks, Samira. Uh, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, uh, the other slide. Uh, yes, that, that's all. Thank you. Uh, so sorry about that, guys. Uh, yeah, so now that we have an idea about uh, what a design system looks like, uh, we'll, uh, whenever like we sort of promote a design system, promote in the sense we when we encourage someone 
to uh, you know use a design system uh, we always get a bit of a pushback mainly due to some misconceptions and myths about uh, design systems so let's debunk a few debunk a few uh, starting off with uh, design uh, starting off with myth number 1 uh, samira uh, previous slide that's one thank you uh, yeah starting off with myth number 1 Mm, only big companies need design systems. So first off, uh, this is an idea that goes around. Uh, even even I used to uh, believe that when I uh, was uh, way before I got into UI UX. Uh, well, it's not just true. Whether you are part of a small startup, a freelance design, or in this case, in a, a student project team competing at uh, Mora UX Explore, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can utilize a design system. Uh, then again, uh, the rules might be different in the competition. However, uh, uh, design systems are not just for big companies. You can, uh, you know, use a design system to get your work done smoothly, to ensure the designs are consistent, and to help everyone, you know, work together uh, in a better way. So it doesn't matter what the size of your uh, team is, uh, you can use a design system. Uh, coming down to myth number two, uh, always use the latest design techniques. Uh, mm, the second myth uh, is uh, sort of uh, quite hard to catch on because uh, design techniques and design trends they uh, you know uh, they uh, tend to shift from time to time. So, for an example, if you take the Google uh, login screen, they recently changed it. So, just like that, even the techniques and trends they uh, try they change over time. So don't try to make your design system uh, align with the latest UI technique, uh, UI trends. Uh, rather than that, uh, try to achieve that at the same time, uh, try to stay on your objective, which is to uh, minimize your work, uh, minimize your, uh, minimize overworking. So uh, don't uh, like, uh, don't try to get lost in uh, trying to achieve all the uh, trends. Uh, coming down to myth number three, uh, one size fits all the material design misconception so this is actually a big one so uh, like i showed you earlier google material design is awesome but without a doubt uh, it has all the bells and vessels and everything but uh, is it perfect to everyone no right so you might agree with me uh, so your design system should actually mirror your unique identity if you are working on a product or something, uh, it, the design system should be able to cater to your particular need. So all the design systems uh, that are uh, that are going to be there, like wouldn't work for you. There would be something out there, uh, uh, something out there uh, that would work for you. Other, if not, you will have you will have to work on your own. Uh, and myth number four is uh, you don't have to make a design system uh, from scratch. Uh, you don't have to like, it, it's not a shame to use an existing designing system. So don't think of it as like, uh, you know, uh, you, uh, you are just using something someone already made. So uh, using a design system, it's quite smart, it's practical, and it can uh, get you further faster. So if you want to explore, so more design systems, you can check out the opendesignsystems.com. Uh, uh, they have quite a list of design systems that are out there. I'll, I'll drop the link uh, after the session. Uh, so you can uh, go there and check it out. What are the design systems out there? Uh, so we are coming down to the final myth. Uh, this, uh, design systems uh, strive creativity. So this is, uh, this is a big myth that's uh, going around in uh, some of the designers uh, as well uh, design systems uh, don't uh, you know limit your creativity it actually would set you free but if you have a solid foundation in place you can spend less time sweating on the small stuff and like uh, more time doing, going into actually solving problems uh, with your design and creative skills so uh, think of a design system as your launch pad for creativity rather than you know, uh, trying to keep you inside a particular box. Yeah. Uh, Samira, we'll uh, go to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, so now that we have a good understanding about the design systems, uh, let's dive into the world of wireframes, uh, mockups, and prototypes. Uh, these are like the building blocks 
of every great digital products. So these three terms may sound uh, similar, but uh, each of them plays a quite a unique role in the design process. So before Mahesh uh, explains this, uh, we'll uh, take a look at what these uh, uh, what these uh, wireframes, mockups, and prototypes are, and what they are capable of, and what their roles are. So starting off with uh, wireframes, uh, the wireframes they might seem quite simple at first, but uh, to give you a bit of an example, imagine you are building a house. So before you get into choosing the paint, uh, the colors of furniture for your house, uh, you need to have a blueprint, right? So basically you need to have a plan. So that's where a wireframe comes in, in the world of UI UX. So they are like the blueprint for your digital products, which lays down the basic structure of the layout. So why do we bother with wireframes? Someone can argue, why not? We, why don't we just go for a mock-up straight away or prototype straight away? Uh, so first off, uh, wireframes, they help us to organize the content and prioritize information on a, in a hierarchy. That means like making sure that the important stuff stand out and the user knows exactly uh, where to go. Plus, wireframes are super efficient. It won't take you... Uh, uh, take you a long time to implement. So uh, the good thing about wireframe is you can uh, pass it on to your stakeholders, to your peers to get a sort of a feedback on your uh, design design decisions. Uh, now uh, let's uh, talk about mockups. Uh, uh, so mockups uh, are like uh, the stage after the wireframes, like imagine you have your blueprint now, you know your plan, you know what to do. So mockups add a bit of uh, color and flair to your wireframes. So mockup uh, takes on wireframes to the next level by adding visual elements like colors, fonts, and images. They are like the polished version of our rough sketch. So why do we love mockups? Well, for starters, they help us evaluate the aesthetics of the design, but uh, we can uh, we can use uh, mockups to fine tune the brandings, uh, uh, fine tune the branding, tweak the colors, and make sure everything looks just right. So, plus they are great for uh, great for stakeholder buying. Buying. So basically, what I mean by stakeholder buying is uh, when you uh, show your mockup to your client or basically to your customer, you can uh, make your presentations pop. So you can get their feedback and uh, get them engaging and excited about the project. And finally, uh, prototypes. So prototypes are the MVPs of the design world. So you have your blue. Prints, you've added your colors, now it's time to bring your design to life. Prototypes are like the interactive version of the mockups, uh, which allows you to click on a particular button, navigate to a particular page, and then interact with your uh, system, with your design as it was real. So, yeah. So, the reason we uh, use prototypes is uh, to sort of do uh, early usability testing. So users can interact with the uh, design and identify any hiccups or roadblocks along the way. It's like basically using the uh, using the implemented uh, application. So once you get those interactions, you can uh, make informed decisions and uh, do any iterations if needed. Yeah, so that's it about uh, wireframes and uh, uh, mockups and uh, prototypes. Now uh, we'll give you a bit of an hands-on uh, inside how to make your wireframes, how to make your uh, mockups and prototypes. So I'll hand over session, the session to Mahesh to conduct conduct the uh, prototyping, uh, the hand uh, the session.
Hope you uh, can hear me. There's an audio problem. Uh, no, it's okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, I was talking about. Uh, so, first, first of all, uh, uh, I start uh, creating this uh, Instagram mockup into a, a wireframe. So, I took this example because uh, when you see it, you, you easily can understand what I'm doing here. So, if you have any questions, uh, you can also ask it here. And uh, first, there is a logo and uh, three action icons and profile images for stories and uh, a post block. And post block contains a uh, um, like icon, comment icon, share icon, uh, uh, save uh, flag icon. And then uh, there are um, images for persons who like and uh, uh, caption. So let's see how we add an uh, image in a wireframe. So let's say you have this Instagram logo. First, you can, uh, as you already, as you know, as you already know, the image should be. We can use this uh, um, shape to also add uh, create a wireframe in Figma. So you can create a image block using uh, this kind of technique. I'm using this line tool and create a cross uh, to re represent the image and then uh, I'm going to group it. You can also use uh, control G here. Then you can see here it is a group now. and uh, to add a background here, I'm going to add a frame here. So you can uh, select whenever in the, whatever in the um, layer or the object you have created and uh, select this frame selection. When you add frame selection, you can add a fill here. Otherwise, when you go to the group, you can see you can't add a fill here. The fill will be mentioned into uh, directly into these lines. If you add, even if you add a fill, you can't see it because the group doesn't add a background uh, uh, background color to this uh, section. So you have to wrap it using a frame. Uh, when when you wrap it in a frame, you can see the fill is there again, and you can add a fill. I'm changing this fill color to a uh, gray color, and also you can reduce the contrast of these lines by selecting this group. Okay, now, if I reduce, you can see the lines are not reducing with this. So I'm going to uh, explain you how the uh, auto uh, auto layout is working work in, the, in Figma while. So, so, so select the group in here. And I'm, I'll be renaming it to uh, image. And you can see there is something called auto layout. I'll be selecting this frame and add auto layout here. Now you can see the layout automatically set, but uh, the lines are not uh, frame. This works as the uh, container, so it will fix. It will uh, this will fit into that container. So we will do the same to this uh, height also. And you can see now it is moving with the uh, outer box. This is this has been done to uh, simplify your uh, wireframing process. Otherwise, you have to add a uh, rectangle or something here and uh, get a line and draw it, draw it here and okay. so you don't have to do all those things in uh, when you create something like this also you can create this as a component when, whenever you create one uh, the uh, copies will be following the uh, following every format you Every, everything you do to the main component. So I'll uh, use this uh, for now. I'm not using components for wireframes because whenever you do a wireframe, please make sure to do it fast and uh, you just only need to think about the uh, content and all and the flow. Just uh, don't try to make it attractive and all. So just uh, try to put your detail uh, 
here and uh, fill it. So first we have this logo. Since the since the logo is uh, an image, uh, we can have a holder here, and uh, also we have icons. So when it comes to icons, you can use words. Uh, let's say plus for plus icon, and uh, I am framing it into into a section, and I can add a background here. So I can reuse it again. Uh, I'll be selecting this color here. You can select any color from this, speak, this using this speaker. And uh, here you can uh, add a padding to select frame in the auto layout. You can add a padding, adding a padding, and uh, also if you want to make it round circle, and uh, yeah, just keep as simple as possible. Plus, and also you can say it is like as like. Anya and also a message icon. This will be the header part. So then here comes the post section. We'll use this uh, same uh, image placeholder. And let's make it same width and height. Use shift to reduce the size. And here there is a border radius. So whenever you use border radius, you can see the lines are out of the uh, section. So you can use this clip content one, content checkbox to hide that outer part. Here you can see in the first section you have this. Uh, board radius you can increase it or you can uh, you can when you how the uh, how the mouse you can see these uh, arrows for the left and right you can drag it left or right to increase it or you can yeah you can uh, as in the example you can have uh, one half Profile images, and you can select all and uh, justify the spacing here. Yeah. You can see this icon when, when you select one more than one image, one uh, say one uh, component. You can see this. Uh, if the if the gap uh, gap are the same, you can't see it. If the gaps are different, you can see this uh, icon here. Then you can press it and holding the shift and dragging it. Yeah, and uh, then this is you can see now this is my frame, and these contents are outside of that frame. Frame. So just you have to select these ones and get it inside the frame. Always see if you are creating it inside it or not. Uh, you can notice it whenever if you have a, a check this uh, clip content uh, checkbox and. Uh, whenever your content is outside of that frame, you can see it is over, over uh, it is overlapping the page edge. So make sure when the content is there, the all the content components are inside that frame. So let's and uh, you can add. Uh, I recommend you to add. Uh, Similar contents as in your uh, actual development, so everyone can get an understanding about uh, the real design, real content. So yeah, here yeah, I'm adding a name. We don't need to add real content. We just have to mention what is in there. Now, uh, since it is there, I'm going to add uh, this post section using this same circle. You can see when we, are, when we have created this component, we have it here. We can use it in multiple locations. You can also convert it to a component if you like. Since it is a wireframe, I'm not going to convert it to a uh, component. I'll show you in the mockups how to convert into a 
component is we reuse it. Uh, Yeah, I'm adding up fonts uh, here and uh, there is an action I like more icon here. Get this one and uh, you can add the same here. Now the post and get this one copied here. Whenever you uh, press Alt and drag. You can get a copy. Um, there are a few icons here also. I'm getting this copied and uh, yeah, like icon and. Uh, Message icon. Let's say share. Here we have an icon to save or flag it. Now we have this uh, three profile section. We like this post, and I'm getting this one again. Again, small. Edit. There, there is this text. Get a text layer and edit here. If you have anything related to the content you are using, just copy it, copy and paste. And in this font size. Doesn't matter how what font size you are using. I'm just doing it when I understand it. Light by grace. Also, you can use uh, content generation plugins in the plugin section here. Components plugin just you can use in plugin section. You can search for any content uh, generation plugins, so or you can. I'm not encouraging you to use plugins, so since you are learning it still, so for these kind of things, also you can use if you want. Now we have this navigation. Also, it uses the icon. I'm getting this one here. This home. Videos. Also, you can copy, copy properties here and paste properties here. You can see. If you want to select something inside a frame, First, you whenever you click first, it will be selecting the parent layer. If you double click, it will go likewise in the inside layers. Or you can click with control, and it will be selecting the uh, most possible uh, child uh, inside that frame. So you can select it easily. And I'm selecting this one and copy this. 
the shortcut is control alt c so uh, control alt v is the paste properties one so i think it might you can also select all these at the same time also you can use this option too also if you like you can add a time to separate here since it is a high frame it doesn't matter what you do i am reducing the passage so likewise you can create a quick uh, wireframe for your design uh, whenever you create there is no design uh, keep it in mind so you have to imagine what is in there and you do you use your research to create, create this uh, wireframe so uh, and another thing is when you create a wireframe it should the the items the elements should uh, reflect in your design also otherwise uh, it will not be a uh, good design or something you if you haven't followed this one so let's move on to uh, the mockup part So this one you have to have all the layers inside it. I group it. Now for the prototype, go to the frame tool and get a new layer, new uh, artboard, and uh, I keep this as a guide. Yeah, and get rid of this. Hope you all can hear me. So I'm continuing to do this. I have this uh, Instagram logo here. So I'm going to get it. Or uh, if you are using first, if you are using a bit system, you can have it here in the uh, layout bit uh, section. Uh, you can create uh, one or using this plus icon and uh, then click on this and uh, let's say. Uh, columns i'm going to use if i if you are going to use columns you can use this one and uh, let's say you are going to use five columns in mobile or four columns you can change it here uh, in my case uh, i'll use five columns now and uh, if you need any cutter uh, around this you can use this margin section to add a uh, margin here and uh, the cutter means uh, in between uh, Gaps, you can make it whatever you want. So first, uh, you can see uh, as uh, our previous presentation explained, we uh, we, uh, we have to uh, careful about our typography. So here, uh, this these people are using a, a low contrasting font. So font sizes and also uh, to create uh, uh, fonts, font uh, flow, you can use something like this. Uh, there are a uh, lot of plugins uh, for this kind of things. You can use uh, one of these plugins. I'm using this type scale to give you an understanding how, how we create this, uh, this kind of uh, style. So here there are, um, on scale methods called minus second, major second, and kind of thing go on, ending with golden ratio. So if you start from the first, first ones are the low contrasting font, font sizes. And if you need medium contrasting font sizes, you can use uh, major second to major third. If you need uh, high contrasting font sizes, you can use uh, any, any of these uh, after major third to golden ratio. So these are pretty standard uh, ones. So in Instagram, you can't see big font sizes, no contrasting fonts, uh, font sizes. So it is uh, based on a simple font sizes. So we can use minus second uh, for this one. So I'm going to create a base style. Base style means 
you are whatever the font size you are using for the body uh, body content let's say this kind of area so i'm going to pick 12 no, not 12 i'm going to set it 40 let's go with 12 and then uh, minus second and you can uh, round near all pixel means uh, you whenever you create this uh, let, let let me create it first when you create it you can see there are 17.71 pixel so point values are there so get rid of those you can click on this round to nest uh, the nearest whole pixel and then it will become a uh, whole pixel so yeah as you can see 18, 18 or 17 that kind of stuff so that is how we create a font scaling so we can take this as h1 which is the highest size of font h2 i'm renaming it to get and give, give you a better idea about this h3 4 5 6 and this is uh, we can call it uh, body large let's say large medium this is small this should be large uh, we get let's just make it large uh, and this one medium is a uh, small extra small okay after we done all this there is this section called uh, style section here and a uh, local variable section so in your design you have to use uh, local variables and local styles to make it uh, if you are going to make a design system a, a proper design system first you have to focus on your variables and uh, local styles so i'm starting it i am starting off with this uh, font styles so you can select all these this is a, a simple method which you can uh, have in your design uh, flow so otherwise you have to select one of these and click on this uh, for dot icon uh, which calls styles and uh, you can simply click on this create style icon and give your name you can click on show more option to uh, get more properties here and you can change anything you if you want uh, and you can create now if you go to local style section you can see this uh, h1 style is there let's say you are you have type using this 11 font size and you can you can go over here and simply select this it will apply all these styles here so let's see a way to add these simply into this style section instead of adding them uh, one by one so you can select all of these and uh, go to a, you can find a plugin called text styles to text styles creator in a Sigma by Sigma section. If you search, you can see a bunch of uh, different different uh, plugins are there related to this uh, scenario. So I'm selecting all of these and going go there and click, click on it. It's created. You can see added eight new styles. So you can see here the styles are created. Also, you can group these styles. Let's say you want this body medium large and uh, all those styles in a uh, uh, fold. You can say uh, body slash medium. So it will be grouped inside a fold. So also you can drag and drop all the body, uh, all the fonts related to body section. So reorder it uh, as you wish and uh, these are headings so create a folder for headings 
and uh, put slash after headings title and h5 between h5 and heading there is a slash so it identifies it has a uh, root so it will uh, wrap it using a folder so here you can see heading is there now you can select all drag it if you want you can order it uh, highest to lower or lower to highest now we have created uh, text styles we don't need this anymore whenever we type something we can go to this uh, text section and see here clearly uh, body font sizes and uh, heading font sizes you can apply them uh, uh, as you want if you apply one you can change it using clicking by clicking on this uh, heading section let's move on to our layout so here we have this uh, instagram logo i have downloaded uh, few images before this session so i'm using this logo as you see i have created this margin 16 pixel margin so i am using the, this uh, grid system to align my design into this uh, artboard so first i have created this instagram logo and i'm uh, wrapping it into a frame and making it to a, converting it to a uh, component create component you can see create component here or you can uh, zoom application on here you can see here uh, when you select this frame you can see this uh, component icon you can click it and add it in as a component the reason to make it uh, uh, a component when you have selected you have added it in uh, multiple pages you just have to go to asset or uh, click here and go to main uh, go to main component Go to main component. It will uh, redirect to you to the uh, main component. And if you change this one, uh, all the changes will be applied to other sections also. So basically, if you want to add a colored uh, Instagram logo, you don't have to go everywhere and replace it. You just have to uh, replace it in the uh, it in the uh, main component. Keep the main component in one place and use the uh, instances throughout your design. So you know where to find your main components whenever you want. And I'm using, now I'm going to tell you how to use these icons. Um, uh, in material community, you have a community version for material design icons. So uh, to give you an idea, I'm using this material design uh, icon library and you can get these uh, icons from here. Just copy and copy the entire thing. Go to your uh, design. You can add a page called icon. Paste it here. So, now if you go here, you can see uh, this is a component. This component is linked into the community version. Now, if you go right click here and go to main component, you can see the tab, it linked into this uh, material design section. So whenever they update this, your design also get updated. So we don't need that. So we have to add our own icon set uh, in here. So I am creating this, I'm selecting all these icons and uh, right click here. And I am also creating 
components out of these components. So when whenever I click components, you can see uh, in icons page, these components are here. But the issue is all icons are in a single component. We don't need that to happen. So we need to we need all these to be separate uh, separate components. For that, you can go here and create multiple components. And now you create that, you can see all the icons are here sep separately. So in order to change your icons in the design simply, you have to uh, convert all your icons into uh, components. That's how you, uh, in your interview, in, in uh, next session, in, in, the, uh, in the later part, you will know why we did this. I cannot. These icons for now. Let's go ahead with the. Uh, I'm taking one of these. In here, you have this plus icon. Now go to the assets and section and drag icon, whatever you like. And when you drag an icon, you can see there's a drop down, which means you uh, it gives you access to swap uh, through your uh, components. So whenever you select this, you if you get this uh, drop down, you can change the change your icon by searching on top of here. Let's say plus. You can see entire uh, material library, the library we have converted into components. You can see it here. Uh, and you can search. If you don't have it, it means you have, you have converted all, them, all of them into uh, plus. Plus icon is not there. I, I'll be converting it also into component inside this design. For now, let's put icon here.
that are not into a, into a, a component. You can see it here. The color should be black. In order to uh, serve between uh, icons, we have to make it a component. And use the same. And if you have the icon, the light be as a component, you can see it here. This is this. Now, uh, there are something called uh, auto layout, as I mentioned before. You can convert it to this into a auto layout uh, using Shift A, or here you can right click and make it convert it as a auto layout and select both of these and press Shift A. It will uh, add it as a auto layout. And, uh, now, if, uh, if you uh, add something, whenever you have used uh, auto layout, you can adjust the padding and all here. And uh, also, you can manage it uh, easily. I'm adding this auto layout to this section also. So now you can delete uh, and remove this. And add padding to this section. Now let's create this uh, profile picture part. I'll take a picture from here. I'll make it point five by seven five. And uh, when you uh, add an image, you can fill it, fill it, or crop it according to your requirement. I make it as fill the uh, entire width and height, and convert it into a circle using these uh, dots. Or you can use this uh, here and uh, type whatever you want. Here you can see. There is a white color border and a gradient. So to do that, I'm wrapping this using a, a frame selection. And inside that frame, we have this profile picture. Uh, for the profile picture, I'm going to use a, a stroke from here. Add a stroke and make it white. Uh, if you are using it uh, regularly, you can plus and add a variable, let's say white it into a, any collection you want very easily. So now, can you add a variable? In a local variable section, in the local variable section, you can see that uh, variable is stuck. So whenever you change this, the colors you have used everywhere will be changed. So that is the uh, plus when you are using uh, variables. So let's uh, make it the border like something like three pixels. And uh, for the frame, I'm going to add a, a fill and it should be circled also around the border, around the corners. So I'm going to add a radius here. Like when you select fill here, you can see there are multiple options. You can fill it with solid color, gradient, and image for video. So in this case, I'm going to uh, use straight gradient to uh, get this effect. Uh, and uh, I'm rotating this uh, gradient to 90 degrees to get that uh, same effect. For the first node, I'm going to add a yellowish color. 
which select for edge. Uh, the second color should be um, purple, dark purple. Now you can't see the colors because uh, the frame is fitting into this image. Uh, now add auto layout and add the padding here, let's say three pixel. And now you can see with the padding, now the image is inside the uh, frame and uh, the area which is uh, empty with the padding, empty with the padding is applying the background color. So now you can select it again and there is a, a light color in the middle, add a note from the middle. And uh, I'm not going to match the same thing here. Now you can see the borders and uh, colors are there. You can uh, change the border size and padding to uh, manage these gaps. If you reduce the padding, the gradient will be reduced. Let's say two and two. Yeah, you can see the gradient is now uh, two pixel with uh, the. I have given this uh, stroke to the image, so image outer with outer border will handle by the uh, image. So you can uh, make it uh, the stroke. You can add it to inside, center, or outside. In this case, I'm going to make it center uh, and uh, increase this uh, adding also. Now, uh, this has also a name. Uh, before name, I'm going to add this plus icon. I'm going to make it a component, which is uh, you can switch off the com component inside this. Uh, uh, items inside this uh, component and use the same thing to achieve this entire thing. So I'm going to add every, each and every element inside here into this, my, into my computer component and uh, use properties to uh, turn on and off uh, all those things. And here I'm going to add an icon. Uh, in icons. Is Plus. Yeah. Now, and I'm going to wrap it using a frame, shift A. Now this is a frame and I'm renaming it plus icon as plus icon. And uh, you can add a, you can see it is a rounded shape one. So the size of this uh, maintained by this padding, so remove it. Make it uh, like two pixel by two pixel, and increase this padding. Now it is a rounded corner one, so you can add a background. And uh, let's pick this color. That this color as a variable. So let's say neutral one. Variable, now you can see the variable is here. You can, anytime you want, you can change it. So, the design will be changed accordingly. And uh, the size should be reduced. So, select this one and make it pixel now and use the stroke color as white. Already I have created the font for the uh, variable for that. Now, I'm adding it here. Now, there is a, this is the tricky point. So here, this is a uh, uh, related, really, this is in a related position. So it will uh, move according to your auto layout frame. So to get it out of this, you have to make it absolute position. You, you can see a small icon here called absolute position. Whenever you click this, it will inside the frame, but it can be behaved as free as you want. So, yeah, 
that way you can uh, get it inside this uh, that way you can align this into your design so use this technique if you use something like this in your designs um renaming it as story there is a text below this uh, and the uh, story i'm adding a font style here uh, let's say let's add a small one and get it inside this uh, frame let's uh, rename this as story and uh, you have to select both of these and get it inside a frame again and you have it inside a one frame now this is story now we have this kind of a structure here you can see it is inside a one frame now uh, we are converting this into a uh, component and when you can convert it into a component you can see there is a uh, option called property here in the sidebar uh, there is this plus icon here so you can click on it and let's create a boolean property first uh, you can see this plus icon is not appeared in this uh, other circles in other stories so we can remove it using this uh, boolean property let's select this one and uh, let's say uh, as icon you can make it true or false uh, this time i will make it false you can so you can see the uh, effect here um, creating the property and uh, going to this icon inside the component you can see i'm in the plus icon uh, frame uh, and uh, whenever you go to there you in your layer section in the properties uh, in the uh, option section you can see the layer option here and there is an icon uh, to apply boolean properties uh, to this layer and you can check it and you can see has icon uh, boolean properties there now select it now you can see it is in i'm making it components slash story when you add a name like this component slash story it will uh, in the asset section it will uh, list under a component folder so you can simply select it uh, use, using that uh, navigation method so here uh now this is a component this is the this is an instance of uh, that component component which we are use we have used we will we'll be using in the design so in the in here you can see uh has icon uh, properties there now you can turn on and see you can your uh, element will be uh, visible whenever you turn on it now go to your component again this is a instance uh in your component there is another uh, property called text now if you select this you can't see a place to change your story name or you have to double click and change it now we are going to add a uh, property to make it simplify so go to your text uh, property always you have to select the uh, main component to get these properties Select text and uh, let's say label, and you can set a uh, default value. Let's say story label get property, and select this uh, text layer. If you go to layer panel, you can see I'm selecting this uh, text layer, and uh, in the layer panel layer section, you can see this icon. Select it and so uh, in, in the uh, text section we have this story name uh, input field here other after that you can see this uh, icon apply text property and so you can apply it here 
now you can see the uh, uh, content has been changed whatever we have put it as a uh, placeholder so yeah that is how you uh, add a uh, text uh, property and whenever you go to this uh, instance you can see now there is a uh, input field to change that uh, text properties now you can see uh, in your instance whatever the instance you get your text could be changed and uh, then now here the alignment is wrong now you have you can't you don't need to go to each and every component to change it just go to the parent one and uh, select it centered and also you can make this auto uh, and add uh, auto layout here and make it center to left align center line right align likewise i'll make it center center top if you select this uh, top five arms you can see it is set top cent top center left or right middle uh end likewise so uh, it doesn't matter if you have selected center line text or not uh, if you have selected this as centered you can uh, adjust this into the center. Now uh, we have everything here. Okay. Uh, you can add a text. You can change, remove the color and all. And we have another uh, thing. Uh, we have to have access to change this uh, compound from here. So go to this one again. There is another uh, instant, uh, property called instance of select it and uh, you can add it here or you can go to your uh, and you can go to the, go to your icon with the, uh, component also and uh, here there is a uh, create instance of property icon here uh, you can click on it and that icon name uh, default icon will be plus and you can add uh, preferred values if you want whenever you select it uh, these will be appeared first uh, in the drop down so you can uh, select it easily now if you go to uh, the first section, you can see icon name is there. The preferred icons are also there. And uh, if you go to an instance, you can uh, uh, you can't see it because the icon is uh, invisible. So, uh, visible, you can turn on the icon visibility, and then you can change it like this. Uh, if you are getting something like this, uh, go to this again. Add a uh, fill color here. Go here and change it to white. Now, uh, as you see, so you can uh, add this, uh, change these uh, icons also here. Now, uh, I'm going to uh, create a one for this uh, circle one. In this case, I'm using a variant property. Also, you can create it from here. I'm, add, I'm adding a variant here. As you can see, now a variant is there. And this will be uh, default one. And this is variant two. I rename this as a simple and restore. I rename it as story, and then uh, I'm removing some of these items. Uh, the border should not be there. And also, we don't need that image stroke. Uh, 
plus icon is there. And also you can see there is a border outline border around this one. You can edit uh, using this stroke, make it white. You can make it outside. You have to do this or before uh, creating the component. So otherwise, before creating a, another variant, otherwise you have to apply them uh, separately in the uh, child components also. Uh, variants also. So, and here, uh, you can use the variable um, center. So, everything is there. Now let's go to your search section and use this here. Now we have auto layout here. You can see whenever I drag it in, it, it is it will be uh, ordered according to the auto layout and i am wrapping it into a lay, uh, auto layout again frame and uh, in a frame again and add auto layout here and arrange it into the horizontal uh, uh, horizontal uh, direction and make it fill container and uh, here the de text should be uh, should be black color so i'm changing it to and I like this as a component. And I like, like the same thing. You can see the instance also changed. I'm putting adding left and right padding to 16. Changing it to 16, and uh, then uh, you can simply press Ctrl D for and there are five, and you can uh, adjust the spacing in using click, by clicking on the frame here. You can see the gap is 10 pixel right now. Our uh, grid system uses 16 pixels, so I'm making it 16, and uh, this is out of grid uh, as for the design, so I'm, I don't need this one. And uh, here in the first section, now you can use properties to uh, hide this one. Now, go to this one and make it more, let's say, type. There are two properties, story, which will be two. you can see type 2 is there story and type 2 i'm selecting type 2 and uh, we don't have a border there. you can see I can change to story and type two. And uh, here you can turn off this plus icon. Here the label should be story. And it's there are uh, multiple images here and uh, you can copy this and go to this image here you can double click or uh, you can go to layer panel and select it and right click 
paste here. So copy it with the image, paste it. Likewise, you can change images. Control C, go to the image, control V. Next image. Now, this post section, you can also uh, use the same if you like, or you can create a, another uh, component. I'm using this type two one, and uh, you have to add a property to remove this uh, label here. I'm going to add a Boolean uh, has label. and then apply this when you have same kind of uh, elements inside on design you can uh, select using this icon now you can see the same elements are selected as uh, we click on that button so i'm going to apply that has label property here in the play section as you see now there is a uh, Property call has label and removing it. Now you can see we have this, uh, and I'm framing it again. Same selection at left and right, adding using auto layout and make it a container. Uh, you need to have a uh, gap here so you can control it using this uh, this one, this property, select the main frame and use the to layout to uh, manage the gaps between elements. As you can see uh, here, the gaps are same right now. So I make it around uh, Here, the component size does show how to add a new one if you are going to use the same thing and uh, name it as a small component. Let's use a new component here. I'm going to detach this. And, uh, this should be like fifty. Mm. Adjusted. Add it here. Bring it here. I'm adding name Samuel. Now you can see inside auto uh, layout, we can align it in the center and uh, use our fonts large. And there's an icon here, we want from here. Now, uh, and auto layer frame around this also you can make it fill container and align the elements inside it using this alignment to layout. Let's see we have icon there. Yeah. 
Now this is from my real library. So yeah, I have used that one and uh, you can add a image inside here using get an image. Let's make it a frame and a frame. Net frame around it. Adding clip content. When you clip content, uh, whatever outside the frame will be uh, invisible. So like that. Uh, Now I'm going to uh, wrap this inside a, another frame. Make it post. I'm here. I don't need this much padding. Reduce it. Layout and change. Now you want. Okay, you want. And uh, there are three icons here. I copy the same thing from here and edit inside this post frame. So you can see it is there. Now I'm going to frame it again. Net left and right padding. And inside there, there is another icon. I'm going to get one from here and select the parent and here now go to the parent and uh, you can see there are direction icons are uh, listed here and uh, select this one and make it justify uh, item and uh, justify with when you double click on this the uh, gaps will be auto will be changed to auto which means the gaps inside this uh, sec two sections will be automatically increased. So select the frame and make it uh, fill container. There are, uh, you can have, make it have content, fix it, you can set a fix it and fill content. I'm going to make it fill container and justify it. Inside. Now the trick is you have this uh, three icons in, uh, in a one frame and this uh, icon in this icon in another frame. So it will justify the spacing and uh, Going to get this image again. Yeah. Now we have this one here, and I'm going to resize this to 25 something. Now uh, I've it, and uh, now, now you can see there are. Uh, these uh, profile pictures are all happy, so you can increase, uh, you can make it this direction to horizontal and make it minus. Here you can make it minus. Uh, always select the correct frame, otherwise you won't get, you will not see the uh, changes. Uh, now I'm going this one and uh, add a stroke here. Also, one You can see it is uh, overlapping each other. Uh, if you want to change the direction, you can go to this uh, this icon here and uh, make it first on top. It will change the direction. This will be making it last one. Now, uh, yeah. now there is a content here. Choose a type layer, next layer, and uh, 
and this text here light by race and others. It inside this one and uh, wrap it inside the frame. So, now get it align it to middle and uh, make the uh, make it feel as uh, uh, within the container within the frame and uh, wrap this. You have all, I have already wrapped this in a frame the text layer and make it also fill container yeah make it fill container and use this uh, again and use some threading here 16 likewise so the next part you can get a copy from this one this container this one and make it fill container and i have already the padding is there um, now if you want this gap to be reduced uh, since it is in out in in the uh, it, since it is outside the uh, section you have inside the section it is uh, adding this 20 uh, pixel value in between this so if you want to get rid of, rid of that uh, make it uh, uh, another make both of these inside another layer another frame and uh, reduce this one to uh, whatever you want and uh, there should be padding here you can see I can control the padding inside this uh, frame section. You can rename it uh, whatever you like. Like uh, always rename, rename your sections. You can make them compound if you want. Also, if you are using it in multiple uh, locations. Mm, now we have this uh, icons. Navigations here. There are five icons. Copy them. You can select them all and uh, add a frame around it. And add auto layout in the direction of the horizontal. And uh, with two fill container and uh, justify control. Now add a uh, left and right paddy if you want you can in here if you want uh, you can change the icon sizes here you can lock this so all the icons will be increased using the width and height ratio and make it 30. The frame I'll be using some padding. Now change the uh, items. Home. Can you search? You have it here. Yeah, I have it here. And uh, video. In this one out. And uh, stop. Five. I don't have that. Uh, so for now, say user. Let's use this one. Yeah. 
uh, so likewise you can create uh, your ui using uh, auto layout you can see if i remove this one the bottom part will stick to top uh, if the uh, navigation is uh, let's say it is a sticky one or it will be fixed on bottom you can use this uh, uh, absolute position and keep it here now it will not be moved with the uh, uh, layout yeah uh, also you can adjust the uh, you can add more typefaces using this uh, bold and all i'm not going to do that uh, since i have explained you how to add the uh, style here you can add the uh, body uh, normal uh, bold and light kind of uh, folders also here so this is the uh, uh, use your uh, use this kind of method to use the frames to uh, and uh, Use the frames to do this uh, mock up and uh, use auto layout inside that to uh, make it more uh, simple when you uh, adjusting elements in, inside here. So, I am using this iOS status bar community version here and uh, get this uh, element from here and put it here and reduce the top margin to let's say 15. The container. I'm going to add some padding here. Use a frame around it. Guys, you can uh, create a mock-up, and uh, if you want to, uh, let's say, prototype it. So we have this page here. You can say you can select whatever the element or page from this this uh, section and go to your prototype section. There is a section called prototype and uh, select the icon you want to click when uh, whenever you want to change the page. Select the icon, and there is a plus icon here, or you can add uh, interactions icon from the interaction icon. Click on it, and uh, on you can select whatever the action you are performing. Uh, I'm going to add on tap. Uh, on tap, I'm going to change navigate to this other uh, page. I think it is not frame fifteen. This frame here. Yeah this one you can drag and drop your uh, handles and uh, add prototype and uh, here also whenever you click on when whenever you are in the prototype page you can see this uh, uh noodles kind of lines everywhere so you can click on it and uh, you can get these options so here you can change the uh, action you need you are going to change use and uh, here the artboard you are go going to navigate to and instant uh, instant is the animation type it, this will not have any animation or smooth effects so you can use this all to get an animation you can set it easy in out or anything you want uh, reset scroll position whenever you go to another page it will start start from the top so yeah so let's Preview this using uh, preview screen and see what we have. Okay. Here you have this. You can see uh, adding more content here. I'm going to group this post and likes here. Post. I'm going to duplicate it to get some uh, scrolling here in this navigation part. Uh, I'm going to add a background so it is not transparent. It will be transparent. So it. now you can see the uh, navigation on top. 
you go to prototype, you can select the uh, device type you want. And have the, the options and uh, you have to keep scrolling uh, vertical so you can scroll it. Now the section is scrolling with this one, so make it cool. And uh, here you have something called constraints. Now you can see the navigation scrolling with your sections. So we don't need to uh, need it to be like that. So for the prototype section, make it uh, fixed. Stay with the uh, stay with version. So you can see it is not scrolling right. You can do the same to your heading. Now you can go to this part. Uh, I'm converting it to a frame again and adding a background. So whenever you are scrolling, you are not below it. So yeah, adding. And now make it person episode. Uh, adding from the top side of the page to a few other just visible. Go to prototype, make it fixed. Now we know to make it fixed, make sure it is yeah, and uh, get it top. You can see the header is uh, fixed and uh, footer also fixed. Now, uh, in your prototypes, if you are using fixed headers and footers, you can use the same, do the same in your prototypes. Mm. Now, whenever you click on an icon, you will be navigated to another page. If you want to change the animation, which are your navigation right now, your navigation works. Uh, you can move in, move out push slide in, slide out kind of things. I'm going to push slide out. You can see a, an animation here. I'm going to increase this uh, animation time to go to you. And I'm clicking, the animation is there. Yeah, likewise, you can create uh, components mm. and add it here. You can uh, use uh, instance you have to change your through your icons you have to first you have to add your icons icon list here and make them components so that you can select it using other uh, select it using uh, components of icon so yeah use the auto layout in your prototypes and in, when it comes to uh, uh, wireframes don't use uh, don't take much time to uh, create these. Uh, make it uh, simple as possible. And if you want, you can use uh, auto layout. I didn't use it uh, because sometimes you have to um, get it out, outside of this and uh, add in, anything else or something else. So in that case, it will be hard to manage if you put uh, auto layout in a wireframe. So in here, anyone can come here and uh, add any component here and change it if you are not using uh, auto layout sometimes uh, some people don't know how uh, auto layout works so they can adjust it anytime they want in like if, if you are using it in a basic form you can anyone can edit it so keep it as simple as possible and uh, you can also use icons if you like from the library here uh, you can uh, instead of this text, uh, don't spend you spend much time to do this. Uh, do it quick as possible. So yeah, in prototypes, uh, you can design it and go to this uh, prototype section, and uh, whatever you select, you will get this plus mark, uh, and you can drag it simply to this uh, whatever the page you need or the element you need, 
and uh, you can select any animation you want and uh, uh, use these uh, timing and all to uh, adjust your properties of the animation and uh, yeah yeah you have this uh, play icon and you can select preview and it will preview your design here you can click on anything and animate it and you uh, use your prototype these are the basics of the uh, creating wireframe uh, mockup and prototype uh, if you have any questions, uh, this is the time. Uh, let's say Q&A. If you have any questions. Uh, very good. Thank you to Mr. Samrita Varigamangava, Senior Lead UI Engineer, Ms. Madhushan Disanayaka, Senior UI UX Engineer, Mr. Mahesh Silva, Senior UI Engineer, Mr. Samir Vijayaratna, Trainee Associate UI Engineer, and Mr. Timothy Samuel, Trainee Associate UI Engineer from Zone 24 for that very insightful session. Now we'll move to the Q&A segment. Seems like we don't have any questions. So, Ozi, can we uh, ask them if you have any questions? Or... So, there's a question uh, Can Figma generate HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for us? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, in dev mode, you can uh, see the uh, HTML, basically CSS is there, HTML is also there. You can uh, generate it uh, using a plugin also. Uh, in your future uh, workshops, I think it, it will be covered. You can. Yeah, yeah I'll share and show you uh, instance. If you go here and uh, make it uh, toggle this to uh, demo mode, you can see the uh, styles and all there. Also, you can generate HTML using a uh, plugin if you like. Hope I have answered the question. Uh, uh, then, uh, sir, what are the common pitfalls or mistakes that designers should avoid when creating user interfaces and how can they be mitigated? It's the next question. Yeah, um, in that case, uh, it, is, uh, it depends. Uh, when it comes to Figma, I'm talking about Figma. So uh, when it comes to Figma, would you better use uh, auto layout and variables and styles to create your basic structure? Uh, if you have those things, as I mentioned, uh, whenever you get any changes or if you get any uh, color change, let's say you get uh, color changes afterward, your design is completed. Uh, if you don't use variables, uh, you can't change it in from one place. You have to go one by one and change it. So it is a best practice to uh, add variables and styles into your design and uh, complete it using that. I'm talking about Figma. So whenever 
uh, those are the uh, things you have to focus on when you are starting as a beginner in uh, designs. So follow the basics and uh, yeah, that will help you in the process. Yeah. So the next question is, how do you determine the optimal balance between aesthetics and usability in UI UX design and what factors influence the decision making process? Uh, guys, uh, is there any uh, answers from your side also? Any input for this question? Can you ask the question? Yes. How do you determine the optimum balance between the aesthetics and usability of UI UX design and what factors influence the decision making process? Yeah. Uh, so I'll give you a quick understanding. So here you can uh, uh, say when it comes to aesthetics, uh, aesthetics and uh, this kind of stuff, you have to uh, stick to a, a design uh, style guide or uh, design components and so you can uh, manage your design properly. Uh, and then can you type the message again in the time uh, message section? I am sorry. Yes. Uh, someone is uh, okay. Uh, meanwhile, I'll add what Mahesh said. So uh, when uh, when we are talking about design processes and the, this uh, development cycle, product development cycle, we should start with uh, user. The design should be centered around the user. So when making decisions related to UX design process, uh, it should be started with uh, proper research and the data backed by this uh, research done previously. And then only, you can make informed decisions in this UX process and uh, the UI design part comes later, right? So uh, about the factors in, uh, impacting this, this uh, design decisions, there are many, but uh, when you follow a certain UX design process, there are these uh, theoretical principles you can follow. And also uh, between aesthetics and usability, uh, those are two different things. Uh, aesthetics come later in the process and the usability is something to concern when you are uh, initially designing the solution. So uh, I hope that cleared some uh, things about this question. Anything else related to that? And also this is a very uh, broad topic, uh, the UX process and combining UI design into, uh, into that. So... What else do you need to know about this question? Hope that cleared some things. And hope I was audible. Yes, madam, you are audible. All right. And there's another question. Uh, so, madam, how can we animate or rotate an image 360 degrees when we are moving with mouse actions? Example, Apple website has we can see animations like 360 degree rotations. Yeah, I'll show it here. So I'll share my screen quickly. Uh, here you can see, uh, yeah, I'm going to add the, I'm going to use a box so you can see in the rotation. I'm adding another one here. I'm going to add, rotate it like this. Oops. 
one thing you can do what, what i what have mb2 so and uh, the animation in the animation section section can make it uh smart timing is in south i'll make it 800 milliseconds let's see now we should click it you can rotate it so likewise you can add uh, frames and do an animation or you can add uh, uh make it as a component and uh create variants of it and add another and add another variant here and rotate it sir uh the audience member is actually asking about 3d rotations 3d rotation it is something uh very complex so also you can uh, yeah you can do it uh, i have find a uh, see if there is a plug plugin or something to uh, make it uh, 3d uh, compatible so that in that case we have to uh, do some uh, another session to uh, well, to explain that to you so yeah if you are going to use a 2d animation this way you can do it uh, 3d animation is another level so you have to spend uh, more time uh, with that in your uh, next workshop i think uh, you can uh, ask for it and uh, yeah go ahead with that anything else So I think that's it. With that, with that, we'll conclude the Q&A segment. A big thank you to all our participants for their engaging questions and to you are US experts from Zone 24-7 for their insightful responses. Moving on, let's proceed to witness the living proof of tech excellence, the forefront of tech wonders, who are busy creating magic behind the curtain. And yes, you guessed it right, I'm talking about none other than Zone 24-7. In today's fast-changing world, Zone 24-7 leads the way with their awesome ideas and dedication to simply making things better and being real leaders in what they do. In this showcase, we are going to take you on a journey through the world of Zone 24-7. So ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. dim the lights and get ready to witness the definition of tech excellence. We are Zone 24-7. an advanced technology and research center established and headquartered in San Jose, California in 2004. 
specializing in offering end-to-end -end technology consulting and engineering services, encompassing both hardware and software. Our sound research and development background means that we are constantly developing leading-edge technology solutions ahead of market needs. Our ability to meld hardware and software solutions places us among a handful of companies in the world with the ability to do so. Zone 24-7 has continued to show phenomenal growth since its establishment, which has pushed us to be a pioneer in the IT industry. We work towards our vision of enhancing the emotional experience of everyone we touch, be it our customers or employees who are part of this great organization. Our global outreach is empowered by local talent. We are the industry leaders when it comes to hardware and software, catering to an array of industries and providing state-of-the-art products and solutions for global customers. Zone 24-7 is led by a tech-savvy leadership focusing on technology innovation and our direction is shaped by mentorship and guidance. We are an organization with autonomy and empowerment which brings creativity and innovation to our day-to-day -day lives. We have a diverse range of products and solutions being developed under one roof, bringing in major technologies and diverse tech stacks into our work. We are the industry leaders in a multitude of technology domains including software engineering, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, robotics, embedded systems, and many more. We are also a pioneering leader in software quality assurance and test automation, striving towards making us a center of excellence in software quality assurance. Zone 24-7 has the luxury of a work culture that is collaborative, friendly, caring, and supportive. Both our culture and environment build camaraderie among us. Our culture has inbuilt learning and development defining us as a learning organization where knowledge and learning are highly valued. Zone 24-7 is a place where one can learn, grow, and achieve a great career. We have a mentoring and coaching mechanism to support individual career growth. We follow industry best practices in managing talent and keep a high focus on the potential for growth and personal development. Your aspirations are important to us. We provide opportunities to create, innovate, and influence our global products and solutions. You will be able to see the results of your work in a global environment and grow in a career aligned with your expectations and potential. Providing opportunities for intellectually demanding and emotionally rewarding work. We are Zone 24-7. Now, before moving on to the next part of the session, Let's take a moment to express our heartfelt gratitude to the UI UX masterminds of, from Zone 27 for their expertise and knowledge shared with us today. On behalf of the organizing committee of Mora UX Explorer 2.0, I would like to extend my heartfelt appreciation to our esteemed speakers for their enlightening insights and valuable contributions to today's workshop. In acknowledgement of the remarkable commitment, we would like to extend a warm invitation to Mr. Sam Sita Vadimagamur, Mrs. Madhushandi Sanayaka, Mr. Mahesh Silva, Mr. Samir Vijayaratna. Thanks, I'm going to start with the screen on it. In acknowledgement of their remarkable commitment, we would like to extend a warm invitation to Mr. Samdit Patnagamur, Ms. Madhushani Disanayaka, Mr. Mahesh Silva, Mr. Samir Vijayaratta, and Mr. Timothy Samu from Zone 24-7, kindly accept the token of appreciation. This token symbolizes not only our gratitude, but also a deep appreciation for the time, effort, and expertise they have generally shared with us. Mr. Mr. Samdita Vadimagamur, Ms. Madhushani Disanayaka, Mr. Mahesh Silva, Mr. Samir Vijayaratne, and Mr. Timothy Samir. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and expertise with us today. Your insights have expanded our understanding of UI UX and inspired us to explore new horizons in this ever evolving field. And we look forward to implementing the knowledge gain today and continuing our journey towards excellence. Thank you once again for your unwavering support 
and dedication to the success of workshop one of more explorer 2.0 we are forever grateful for the privilege of learning hand in hand with the industry finest ladies and gentlemen it's time to be flying as we evinced in the world of ui ux design with an insightful workshop with the industry's top notch so before me, we move on to the next part of the session. Let's capture a moment to remember. It's time for the group photo. So I would like to invite every single one of you to please gather on their screens, switch on the cameras and smile. Thank you, everyone. Let's freeze this moment of collective inspiration and creativity. And there you have it, a snapshot of a vibrant community united by a passion for UI UX design. And now a quick sneak peek into what awaits you in the competition. Round one submissions will open tonight at 12 p.m giving you ample time to fine tune your designs and ideas. But mark your calendars, folks, because round one submissions deadline is on March 23rd at 11.59 p.m. sharp. Make sure your entries are in before the clock strikes midnight. And here's the exciting part. From the pool of submissions, we'll be selecting the top 100 teams to advance to the next round. So give it all and showcase your best work for a chance to make it to the next stage of the competition. But wait, there's more. After that, round two of the competition will start soon and there will be another fun workshop to help you get even better at designing. Stay tuned for more updates and details about round workshop two and round two and get ready to take your UI UX journey to new heights. Before wrapping up the session, I would like to offer a huge thank you to our incredible workshop partner, Zone 24-7, for being the driving force behind the success of this workshop. Their support has been instrumental and we extend our heartfelt gratitude to each one of them. Alongside that, let's take a moment to 
express our sincere thanks to each and every one of you, our enthusiastic participants, your active engagement and passion for UIUX, Design have made this workshop truly special. Thank you for joining us on this educational and inspiring journey. Your presence has added immense value to this workshop. And we hope you will leave with newfound knowledge and enthusiasm for UI UX design. With that, workshop one comes to an end. As we bid farewell to this workshop, I find, I hope you find the motivation, strength, and creativity to make it through round one. Keep the creativity flowing, stay resilient, and remain passionate about UI UX design. Good night and take care. I'm Ranjit Kulasekar, officially signing off.